congratulations to each one on the 30th anniversary of the IFP. I'd like to discuss the use of a technique, which although not novel, is I think a very novel application. Now we've heard about the various treatment options for diabetic macronema. The fact there are a number of treatments demonstrates that no one is perfect, and also provides an indication that the mechanism <coughs> of action of the development of macronema is probably multifactorial. So it makes sense to try and approach it from a number of different directions. And what is not so often considered is the nature of the vitreoretinal interface and how it might influence the development and the sustenance of macroedema. Certainly we know that if you have uh, very obvious tractional changes in the form of, uh, for example, an epiretinal membrane, uh, the contractile properties of the membrane and the dynamic properties of the vitreous uh, can tend to tent up the retina, uh, cause damage to the intraretinal architecture, leakage of fluid and edema. And if one peels the membrane, as uh, the case of the one ago, then the retina can settle back into place and the edema can largely resolve. But on the other hand, a past pain protectomy is not without its risks. Cataract, retinal detachment, and optimitis, and so on. And probably what is less recognized, but I think it's probably significant when you're uh, doing work in the macular region, damage from the light pipe on the already compromised photoceptors. Pneumatic retinal epoxy refers to the injection of a bubble of some form of gas into the vitreous cavity. And it's been recognized from uh, the work of a number of uh, authors who have observed that the injection of a bubble of gas in the presence of an atap vitreous can in many cases induce a posterior vitreous attachment. And that in turn can have a beneficial effect on certain types of pathology. But one study indicated that it slowed the progression of non proliferative diabetic retinopathy to uh, more severe site threatening changes. And Chan and others in the US showed some time ago that in impending stage 1a and 1b macular holes and in stage 2 small macular holes, the induction of a PVD through a gas injection caused stabilization or aggression of the pathology. Exactly how uh, the gas injection induced a PVD is rather unclear. It may be due to differential compression and expansion of the vitreous, in that way it causes disruption of the posterior hyaluronic face. Or perhaps, as one can sometimes see clinically, uh, a bubble of gas just insinuates itself between the posterior hyaluronic face and the retina and thereby causes stripping. Uh, of the vitreous from the retina and inducing a PVD. The whole process can take two to three weeks. So I, I got interested in this concept and thought I'd do a little study to see if a gas injection could have an effect on macroedema. Uh, we had a number of we were very conservative from the study, which is why the numbers were and have remained rather low, but uh, of course they had that eight atch vitreous. Uh, no other uh, vitreoretinal interface pathology which could not be possibly treated by gas injection, for example, uh, an epimacular membrane. Uh, the macular need to be reasonably well diffused on fluid hydrography, and the patient should be at high risk of developing retinal breaks or detachments. And we took diabetic patients again rather conservatively, those who have had multiple macular laser treatments really with no effect. And I'd say that I started this study before the onset of intravitreal injections became.
became popular. And the treatment involved a fairly standardized injection of uh, 0.3 mils of pure perfluoropropane gas, which could be expected to expand four times to about 1.2 mils in the eye. And we do on a, month, on a regular basis uh, doing various functional and examination uh, procedures at each visit. Uh, this is just a technique. Uh, one draws up uh, the gas into a uh, one syringe and uh, we've, we've replaced our gas canister now which is a bit unwieldy and uh, not empty for uh, disposable uh, flexible packs of gas which is much more uh, Safer in terms of sterility and rather more reliable in getting gas out of the out of the package. Uh, one uses a 27 or 30 gauge needle, the finer the better, and injects with a pass plane of 3.5 or 4 millimeters back and then there's depending where the eyes uh, pseudophagic or phagic, and that's just uh, for those who uh, are less involved in popular uh, surgery, the technique that we use for this. It's very, similar, of course, very similar to using a vascular centus or, or triamcillin. And of course, uh, you check the central retinal artery at the end of the procedure, and do massage, and parasympathesis, or give dynamox, whatever is your favorite way of, of re-establishing the perfusion of the central retinal artery. Uh, over a course of several years, we've been five eyes of five patients, all with uh, advanced onset diabetes, and we could review over up to, up to three years, a minimum of nine months. And, but clinically, on ultrasound, a PVD was induced in all of the eyes within, within a month. And we did notice also that, rather gratifyingly, there was a, a, a reduction to a greater or less extent in macular thickness and also the exudative response. And this was accompanied by some improvement in vision. Of course, these will vary according to the degree of associated ischemia by the pathology. But we did get a mean improvement about 11 ETS letters. Uh, no patients got retinal breaks, let alone retinal attachments. Nobody had endophthalmitis. One patient who had a small fibrovascular complex got a transvitreous hemorrhage as the, as the vitreous separated from the retina. And uh, this is just a summary of, of the result. But in essence, uh, the induction of PVD mm -hmm. seemed to be accompanied by improvement in the maculopathy. And here's a few examples. This was the first patient I treated some years ago now. Quite marked uh, exudative focal exudative maculopathy, reasonable perfusion on the angiography. And in a multiple macular laser treatments with really uh, very little positive effect. He had an injection of gas. And 10 minutes later, the excess is gone. It completely disappeared. And this was without having undergone uh, further laser treatment. I've been seeing them for some years now, and the latest thing is that the Druze and macular degeneration, but the, the x rays haven't come back. It's another case, a gentleman from, I think, Nigeria, again, had multiple treatments with the laser, which hadn't been effective, so we gave a gas <coughs> injection. And over the course of the year, the x rays gradually uh, started to melt away uh, with uh, corresponding improvement in vision. So it, it had the laser treatment, but the gas injection seemed to have an additive effect with this gratifying response. And this is a patient, uh, uh, the African patient OCT, again, show quite significant macroedema, but uh, 50 months following treatment the retina has gained its uh, normal uh, contour in the macular region, and he continues to do well. Uh, 
this is a patient who um, had bilateral micropulse laser therapy, and to the to one eye, which was uh, rather more uh, severely affected by maculopathy, I injected a bundle of gas. And on the left eye, after two years, the x rays really have disappeared from the state from. On the right eye, although in the area which had the initial pathology of the x rays is gone, there's been a, a recurrence of x rays in a different pattern. So the combination treatment seems more effective than the laser treatment alone. And once again, we can see uh, a decrease in thickness of the uh, retina on uh, the OCT. How might this work? Well, uh, relief of VR traction might in a physical sense, uh, just as one pulls on one's skin with one's hand, which of course blanching and swelling of the, of the skin, uh, this may have an effect on restoring the normal architecture of the retina and less tractional forces on the intraretinal vessels. It's been shown that inducing PVD causes increased oxygenation of the fluid phase between the poster hyaluronic phase, which is separated, and the retina. So increased oxygenation will decrease uh, uh, ischemia, which in turn tends to promote the development of edema. Uh, it's a low complication treatment. Uh, although people worry about inducing tears and breaks, I would argue that injecting a bubble of gas uh, has a more physiological effect in inducing a PVD than tugging on the retina during the vitrectomy. If it happens over the course of a few weeks, I would argue there's no more risk of developing a break than if any of us develops an acute posterior vicious attachment naturally. So I think the results are quite promising. I do tend to use it in certain situations where laser hasn't worked. I'm going more towards uh, a combination therapy, or I term quad quadrotherapy, where I, I do a micropulse in severe cases, a micropulse for a treatment, and followed within a week with a triple injection of a vascular, trimacillin, and gas. In tricky cases, because one might argue that you should really not take the tigers in this case, but actually give them everything to avoid the long, drawn-out process of regression and recurrence that we're currently seeing with our attempts at retreatment with different modalities over the course of many a year. Thank you very much.